My name is Amrit Kamboj and I'm the first author of the upcoming article in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings titled Helicobacter pylori, the past, present, and future in management. I would like to thank my co-authors Dr. Thomas Cotter and Dr. Amy Oksentenko for their support. The purpose of our manuscript was to highlight new practice changing guidelines in the management of H. pylori. H. pylori is one of the most common bacterial infections affecting half of the population worldwide. It is the leading cause of peptic ulcer disease, especially when non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory drug use has been ruled out. The prevalence of H. pylori generally increases with age and is greater among blacks and Hispanics compared to whites. Testing for H. pylori is recommended in patients with the prior history of or active peptic ulcer disease, malt lymphoma, or early gastric cancer. Testing for H. pylori should also be considered in patients with dyspepsia especially if the local prevalence is greater than 10%. In dyspeptic patients who are less than 60 years of age and without alarm symptoms, a test and treat approach to H. pylori is effective. Non-invasive tests for H. pylori diagnosis include the urea breath test, the fecal antigen test, and serology, with the preferred test being the breath test and the fecal antigen test given their excellent accuracy and their ability to diagnose active infection. Prior to testing, PPIs and antibiotics should be stopped at least two and four weeks respectively as they can interfere with test results. Invasive testing requires an upper endoscopy and includes the biopsy urease test, also known as the CLO test, histology, and culture. There are various treatment regimens proposed for H. pylori infection. Prior guidelines recommended first-line treatment with a 10 to 14 day course of standard triple therapy consisting of PPI, amoxicillin, and clarithromycin. Over the past several years, clarithromycin resistance is increasing worldwide with estimates approaching 30% in the United States while H. pylori eradication rates are decreasing. Due to the increasing resistance, standard triple therapy is now only recommended for patients who are macrolide naive or from areas of low clarithromycin resistance. Consequently, new treatment regimens have been proposed to counteract this increasing resistance. One proposed regimen is sequential therapy, which consists of PPI and amoxicillin for the first half of treatment duration, followed by PPI, metronidazole, and clarithromycin for the subsequent half. Another treatment regimen is the concomitant therapy, which consists of PPI, amoxicillin, metronidazole, and clarithromycin. Multiple new guidelines recommend first-line treatment with a 14-day course of concomitant therapy consisting of PPI, amoxicillin, metronidazole, and clarithromycin, or bismuth quadruple therapy, which consists of PPI, bismuth salicylate, metronidazole, and tetracycline. Eradication testing should be performed in all patients undergoing treatment, ideally four weeks after completion of therapy. Since non-invasive tests are relatively inexpensive and have great accuracy, eradication testing should be performed with urea breath test or fecal antigen test. In conclusion, H. pylori is a complex bacterial pathogen and a leading causative agent of gastritis, peptic ulcer disease, gastric lymphoma, and gastric cancer. In the outpatient setting, the diagnosis can easily and accurately be performed with urea breath testing and fecal antigen testing. With increasing H. pylori resistance, new treatment regimens have been proposed targeting those with prior macrolide exposure and those from high clarithromycin resistance areas. All treatments should ideally be 14 days in duration and eradication testing should be performed in all patients. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoy the manuscript. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org.
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.